Hey, this is Phil Diaz. I'm the pastor at Greencastle Church of the Nazarene, and this is our podcast. I want to thank you for joining us today. It's my prayer that God would use this podcast to speak to your life right where you're at. I pray it also builds your faith and helps give you perspective on how God can work, move, and transform your life. Enjoy the message. It is good to be here with all of you here today. I want to welcome you all once again to our service here today. I want to just simply take a moment to say hi to our family that's watching online and say hi to our E-Fam. So let's give out a big shout out to them. Say hi, E-Fam! Hi, E-Fam! Amen, amen. So if you're watching online, make sure you drop your comments or your prayer requests in the chat. Let us know how we can best pray for you and support you in your journey of faith today. So today is the last Sunday on the sermon series, Trust in God. How many of you have enjoyed this sermon series so far? And it's been impactful for your life. Amen. Let's give God praise for that. Amen. So today we're going to be looking at the last sermon series. It's called Trusting God with His Promises. Trusting God with His Promises. Turn to your neighbor and say, Trusting God. Now turn to the other neighbor that you haven't talked to the first time and say, With His Promises. With His Promises. Amen. Amen. So I want to ask you a question today, and I don't want you just to hear the question. I really want you to listen and think about it within your own heart and with your own life. Can you do that? This means yes. This means no. This means yes. This means no. Can, can we do that? Yes. All right. Amen. Okay. You're with me. Here's the question. Have you ever found yourself questioning the promises of God in your life? Have you ever found yourself questioning the promises of God? I want you to close your eyes for a moment. You can imagine this scenario. It's late at night. The world is asleep. You're alone with all of your thoughts and everything is calm. And in this moment of tranquility, your mind begins to drift. You begin to think about the promises of God. Those beautiful, powerful assurances that you read in the Bible, that you heard in sermons, that you sung in worship songs. Promises that declare God's love for you, for your neighbor. His unfailing presence, his provision, his plans for your life. All these promises bring hope, comfort, and reassurance. However, as you reflect on them, something begins to nag at you. It's this question of, do these things really apply to me? Doesn't God see where I'm at? There's been some situations that maybe don't line up with these promises that I've heard. And for you this morning, perhaps that comes through trying to pray for a breakthrough that hasn't come through yet. Maybe you've been trying to seek an answer to a question, but all you hear is the silence of the Lord. Perhaps you're in the midst of a storm and to you, God seems distant in this moment. Maybe life's burdens have just simply become overwhelming to the point to where you don't know what to do. Does that sound familiar to you? And in these moments of doubt, you may ask these questions like, is God's love really for me? Does he truly provide for me? Are his plans really for my good and not for my harm? Can his peace actually really surpass all understanding? Is his grace sufficient for me? And can God really do anything holy with this life? It's a lot of good questions, right? And to be honest with you, they're all heartfelt questions that we all wrestle with at one point in our life or another. And let's be real, sometimes it's challenging to be able to harmonize our reality with the reality of the promises of God. And today, what I want to do is share with you something from the Word of God to help you see that God's promises are trustworthy. Amen? So if you're struggling within your life or you know someone who's struggling today, I want you to be able to take this message, be able to put this in your heart, share this with someone today. Let's dive into the scriptures. Let's stand. We're going to read the word of God here today. How many of you are ready for the word of the Lord today? Amen. 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 So today we're going to be looking at 2 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 20. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 20. This is what the word of the Lord says. It says, for no matter how many promises God has made, they are yes in Christ. Woo! 
And so through him, the amen is spoken by us to the glory of God. Amen? Woo, that's such a good word. Let's bow our heads today for the receiving of this word. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we come before you, Lord, and we desperately need to receive this word for us here today. Father, I believe there's some of us here today that might be struggling in one way or another, Father, that only you know. But God, today we're, we're, we're praying for breakthrough, Lord. We're praying for a way to, to speak to individuals, Father. We're praying for a way for you to be able to come and do infinitely more than what we can know and what we can imagine, God. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, that this message and this word that is preached, Lord, be just the things that you want your people to hear. And Father, use me as your servant, Lord, to deliver this message in such a way that is impactful for you and your work and your kingdom. We pray this in the name of Jesus, all God's people have said. Amen. 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 You guys may take a seat here today. Now I'm going to ask another question. How many of you love telemarketers? Raise your hand really high. I know there's some people in here who love getting strange phone calls from strange people in strange parts of the world with strange phone numbers. Raise your hand. Robert's like, yeah, I love it. Okay. This might be for you. So picture this. You receive a life-changing phone call. Right? But on the line is not a telemarketer, nor a salesperson, or someone who sounds like they came from a foreign country. The voice on the other end makes you unimaginably good promises that can wipe away your past, that can redefine your present, and can set your future on an extraordinary path. Now, of course, on the phone, you're like, I don't know about this, I kinda have my doubts. I've been gypped before. You know, I had given to this organization and all I got was a pen that didn't even have the name of their organization spelled right. Right? But here's the thing. The kind of promise that we find here in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 20 is a promise given to us by a promise maker and a promise keeper. Amen? Amen? It's given to us by God. Who is God? God is the creator of all things, of the universe, the king of kings. He's the Lord of lords. He's the one who's making these promises. He's not just making also one promise. He's making countless amounts of promises to you and to your life through his word. Amen? And here's the incredible thing. They're not just simply empty words. They are reliable assurances. These are God's promises. And in this passage of scripture, every single one of them is a resounding yes in Christ. Amen? Amen? Yes in Christ. It's like God saying, remember all these promises that I made in the word? Do you remember when I had Abraham and I made a promise to have descendants given to him that count more than the stars in the sky? Do you remember that? Do you remember David? And I made a promise about his lineage and having the Messiah come through his lineage? Do you remember that? Do you remember that I'm trying to make a way for humanity to have a savior? Amen? And then you think about all the promises that relate just to Jesus and how all of them came true. Amen? They're all fulfilled in Christ. And Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, he embodies God's faithfulness. He embodies the fulfillment of all of his promises, the channel through which we receive the blessings of God and the ones that he has in store for us. Whew. And it doesn't stop there. This verse is also about our response as well. Because it says, and through him, the amen is spoken to us by us to the glory of God. Okay? That means that you're involved in this as well. We're not just spectators. Amen? amen. Man, that's so powerful. If the church could get a hold of that message that we're not just to fill up empty seats, we're not just spectators in this. We are a part of the plan that God has in this world to be a redeeming factor. Woo! Amen. Give God praise for that. And so we do that. And the amen isn't just
just some casual word you use in church. Amen. Amen, Amen brother. Amen. The amen has a meaning to it. Did you know that? It's not just a churchy word. It has a meaning to it. It's our hearts aligning and saying, yes, I believe. Every time you say amen, you say, yes, I believe. And our spirits declare and agree with that and say, I agree and believe. Our soul proclaiming, let it be so within my life. Whew. And here's the thing. All of this leads to a better place than where the promise found you. You see, you may be broken and desperate inside. You may be on a foundation of life that's pretty shaky. But here's the thing. You know where the promise leads to? It says it leads and it goes by us to the glory of God. To the glory of God. You know what that is? That's his ever-involving presence. The glory of God in our hearts, within our lives. How many of you want more of God? Amen? Amen. It means you want more of his glory and your presence in your life. Each promise that's fulfilled is spoken as an amen and acts as a spotlight revealing the true nature of God, revealing his love, his faithfulness, his trustworthiness, his grace. You have a brighter future because of it. You have a clearer day because of it. And he draws us into it and he draws us into a deeper relationship with him. So let's take a moment today and give God praise once more for his glory. Amen. Now I'm going to get to my first point. My first point is this. As we look at trusting God with his promises, the first thing I really want to look at is the promise of presence. Because it's so impactful within our lives. We need the promise of presence. Turn to your neighbor and say, God promises. God promises. And turn to your other neighbor and say, his presence. Yes. Amen. Zephaniah chapter 3, verse 17 says this. The Lord your God is with you. The mighty warrior who saves, he will take great delight in you. In his love, he will no longer rebuke you, but will rejoice over you huh, with singing. He will rejoice over you with singing. So if there's any verse to me that helps unpack the yes and amen, it's this. Because when the Lord says he's with you, it means something more than just simply being nearby. It speaks of an intimate relationship, a closer presence than what you may have with your best friend, with your parents, with people around you. It's a presence of God, not merely just wanting to be next to you, but he's actually going with you. He's experiencing the hurt and the pain that you have experienced. He's going with you through your storm. Amen. So I want to say that again. God is not merely around us. He's with us. And that's such a big difference. You know, as a pastor, I'm acquainted with a whole lot of people. A lot. But the difference is this. God isn't just wanting to be acquainted with you in your life. He doesn't want to just kind of know your name haphazardly, a couple of facts about you, and hope he gets your name right the next time he sees you. God is with you, and he knows you. He's involved in our lives, sharing our experiences. His presence brings us comfort and courage and strength in all circumstances, and he knows exactly where you are at and what you are going through. And he's a better friend to you than your bestest bestie in the whole world, as the young kids say. And he's the most trusted voice that you can have in your life. Because I want you to know this, folks. He didn't just want to be with you. He died for you. Amen. He took every single piece of sin and shame in your life and placed it upon himself. And, and he didn't just end there. He didn't just die for you. He rose again so that you also can have the same power, the same spirit that rose a savior from a borrowed grave that can be alive and well within you. Amen. He did that all for you. And in the scripture, we look at, well, who is this God that is talking about? God is powerful. 
but it describes his power in this way, that he's a mighty warrior. You know what that means? It means that he's fighting for you. He's a mighty warrior who saves. God is more than just a protector. He's a deliverer. He's a savior. Church, have he delivered you from the sins that you used to live in? Amen? As he saved you from the things that used to put you in a rut of sin, but he put you on the solid rock of Jesus Christ. Church, has he done that for you today? Amen. Amen. And so now, this guarantee of his active involvement of our lives is for our ultimate good. And then comes this touching twist that says, He will take great delight in you and his love, and he will no longer rebuke you, but re rejoice over you with singing. This reveals a personal and loving side of God. He's not just all about being a warrior and fighting battles, he's also about being tender and close. His presence is not just some duty that he has to do. In fact, do you know that God delights in being with you? He delights in that. He delights in being with you and to know you more. And he helps us delight more in him to where we can find our true joy, our true purpose for existence. And what I love about this verse is this the last part because it says that he will no longer rebuke you, but he will rejoice over you with singing. And to me, this is powerful to imagine the God of the universe writing a little song just for you as he sings over you and your life. I mean, you didn't think or maybe even know that God was singing over your life, did you? And some of you might be wondering, well, I wonder what that song sounds like. Well, let me paint a picture for you. This song that God is singing to you over your life as he lovingly affirms his grace and his love within your life, his deep affection for you. He reminds us that we're fearfully and wonderfully made because he made us and he put us together. And as the melody of the song plays, it reveals God's incredible plans and purposes for our lives, assuring us of a beautiful future in his caring hands. Just like the Castle Kids story we read about today. And the lyrics, they echo with encouragement. They echo with hope, declaring that nothing, absolutely nothing can separate us from his unwavering love. And he remains with us, guiding us, protecting us through every twist and turn of life's journey. And as we listen to God's song, we hear it celebrating our victories big and small offering us encouragement in times of struggle. It's, it's a gentle tune that whispers comfort and healing to our wounded hearts when we're most hurt. And it resonates with joy, expressing God's delight in our happiness. Because our happiness isn't found within us, our happiness is wrapped around his life and his love and his grace. Church, let me ask you this. Have you heard that song over your life today? I just want you to know, church, he's singing a song over your life. Let's be open to hear what that song has to give to us here today, to speak to us as his promises resonate within our hearts and lives. So turn to your neighbor once more and say, God promises. Turn to your other neighbor and say, His presence. His presence. Praise God for this here today. Amen. Woo. All right, here's my next point. I want to talk about the promise of salvation. So turn to your neighbor now and say, God promises. God promises. And then turn to your other neighbor and say, Our salvation. Amen. See, I'm giving you room to make new friends in church here today, okay? All right. So we're going to look at Titus chapter 3, verse 4 through 7. And this is what the word of the Lord says. It says, but when the kindness and love of God our Savior appeared, he saved us, not because of righteous things we had done, but because of his mercy. He saved us through the washing of rebirth 
and renewal by the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out on us generously through Jesus Christ, our Savior, so that having been justified by his grace, we might become heirs, having the hope of eternal life. Amen. I hope this is preaching to you just the way it just preached to me. I want you to know this, church. God has a promise of salvation for you. And in this verse, it begins by highlighting God's kindness and his love, his immense compassion towards us. Salvation is something we can never do for ourselves. It doesn't matter how good you think you are. It doesn't matter how much you give to the church. It doesn't matter how much morality you may have in your life. All of it is completely worthless without Jesus Christ in your life. Amen. And this is what Jesus came to do. He came to be God's plan of salvation for us within our lives. And through this promise in this verse, God tells us that Jesus is our Savior. He's the one who rescues us then, and he's the one who rescues us now. He's the one who's going to rescue you two weeks from now, if so, it happens within your life. But Jesus is the one and the only one who is able to bring about salvation and give that to you. Someone said, well, what is this fancy word salvation? It just means this. It says in the Bible that all have fallen short of the glory of God. It means we all have done something in our lives to fall short of the glory of God through the sins that we've committed or the sins that we've went with or just the general acknowledgement of just us wanting to be apart and far away from God. Sin is sin. Amen? Yes. And it doesn't matter whether it's a white lie or, you know, you bombed a whole country. Sin is sin. The consequences of sin in this life may vary depending on that sin, but in the eyes of God, it all keeps you away from being closer to Him. Okay? Now, this is where this verse just gets so good. It's because it begins to talk about the washing of your sin, giving you a rebirth and renewal by the Holy Spirit. It signifies a transformation that happens within you. We believe in a doctrine and we have a denomination that believes in transformation and change. Amen. I don't believe that you can just come to church, you occupy a seat, you go through the motions. Oh yeah, I'm so good. And then you just leave and then you go do all the same things and you curse the same people out and you get mad and you get angry. We believe in a God who wants to give you a holy transformation. Yes. But it all begins by understanding salvation. And this verse is so profound. It talks about how God generously, generously, generously pours out his spirit upon you through Jesus Christ. And he's saying, here's my spirit. It's going to empower you and guide you and transform you. And this is the great promise. It's saying you're not alone. God is with you every step of the way. Because the promise of salvation, folks, leads to an amazing truth. And that is this. It says that we are justified by His grace. Hallelujah! It means in God's eyes, when Jesus steps into our lives and He begins to clean us up, and as the old hymn says, makes us as white as snow. It means in God's eyes, we are now declared righteous because of the work of Jesus Christ. We are now forgiven because of what Jesus has done and being within us in our lives. It's not because of what we've done. It's all because of what Jesus has done. And when we invite Jesus into our life, it just keeps pouring out more and more and more. And someone can testify to this here today. He just keeps pouring out more and more and more within your life. Amen? Amen. And so through his promise, we become heirs of God. We become co-heirs with Christ. And what a great inheritance that we have. The greatest gift of all is through Jesus Christ. We have eternal life with him, which is a hope that transcends this earthly existence. Let me just ask you a question. How many of you just love how everything is in this world today? Raise your hand. 
Just love it. I love it. There's a lot of problems in our world today, isn't there? And sometimes I don't have all the answers even to it. But I do know this. I know the one who holds my hand. I know the one who holds my tomorrow. He's the same one that's helping guide you and lead you. His name is Jesus Christ. So I want you to turn to your neighbor and say, God's promises, God's promises. Our, salvation. our salvation. Give God praise. He gives us salvation today. Amen. My, my last point here today is this. I want to talk about the promise of holiness. Promise of holiness. Turn to your neighbor and say, God promises. God promises. His holiness. Amen, amen. I'm looking at 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23 through 24, and it says this. It says, May God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you through and through. I want to read that again in case you didn't get it the first time. May God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you through and through. May your whole spirit, your soul and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful. He will do it. Give God praise for that here today. Amen. I just want to tell you this, folks. The promise of holiness is a game changer in your spiritual life. Amen. The promise of holiness is a game changer. And it's not just like having a little bit of behavior modification. I'm going to do a little bit better in this area. Yeah, looking pretty good. Looking pretty good. Not too bad. It's not about that. You see, holiness is about a complete transformation from the inside to the outside of your life. It's about this same God, the God of peace. He's on a mission to sanctify you through and through and through and through and then again and then again and through and then again and through. Am I making my point here, church? Amen. This same God is here to make us holy, to set us apart for his divine purposes. And, and this promise speaks to our entire being, to all of who you are, your soul, your body, your spirit, everything about you to be changed, to be made into more in being in his image and his likeness. And you're like, that sounds really good. And then I'm going to say this. That means that you can't lie at your job about things that will benefit you. Because lying isn't really what your life should be about. You're saying you want to be set apart. You want to be different. You got to quit that. You got to lay that before the Lord. Let me explain it a little bit more in, 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 in just normal detail. It means that Unless you are divinely <laughs> led by the Holy Spirit, there are some places you do not go. Okay? If you have certain sins in your life, and these places kind of help, like, tickle your fancies in those sorts of ways, you don't need to go there. Unless the Lord leads you. But the Lord knows what you struggle with as well. I don't think he's going to give you a temptation that is going to make you go back into your old way. You see, this is what the promise of holiness looks like. It's not about being a holier than thou. Holiness gets such a bad reputation because there is a lot of Christians that made it about a legalistic right to be able to dig into someone else's life and tell them how they needed to live their lives because it was coming from their mouth and it was not coming from the Lord. Amen? So holiness gets the bad reputation. I see a lot of good people here today that can completely change how that looks. Because God doesn't want you to be legalistic in your life. There's enough Pharisees and Sadducees in the world. What he needs is for you to be able to be changed from the inside out by his Holy Spirit. And then if you have situations in your life, because see, when you have the Holy Spirit, some little white lie at work that you may have never thought of before, it's going to be put on your radar, I guarantee you. And the Holy Spirit's going to say, 
This is not who you need to be because I'm with you. Amen? And so, with holiness, God empowers us with his grace to live holy lives. In fact, it says that he wants to sanctify us through and through with everything. And the one who does this, it says in the verse, he calls you faithful. Or the one who calls you, he is faithful. And he will do it. How many of you have given God room and space to be able to say, I want to do a work within you that looks a little bit better than when you looked there about a month ago when you came to an altar, when you prayed in your private time. I want to do a work within you, not your neighbor. I want to do it within you. And I'm going to clean you up a little bit more. But I'm going to take you through this thing called process. And that process can be in an instant or that process can take a little bit longer time. The process is really between you and the Lord and really just how obedient do you want to be? Let me tell you, church, there's nothing better than being obedient to God. If you want to be on an adventure of faith, be obedient to God. If you want to live a pretty dull and boring life and complain about all the same things that everybody else does, disregard everything I just said. But if you want to live a life that's exciting, that's adventurous, that's challenging, dig into what God is trying to speak to us here today. And, and, and dig into his promise of holiness. Because here's the thing, folks. We can trust that God will indeed sanctify us. And I'm here to tell you today, I've been sanctified by the Lord. I'm here to testify of his goodness. I'm here to testify of his faithfulness. I'm here to testify of his patience. I'm here to testify to you uh, today to let you know that God is alive. He's in this world and he's ready to work and move and transform you in a way that only he can do. Give him praise here today. This time I want to have our worship team come up. And I just want you to uh, play softly for us here today. Church, today we, we've explored all kinds of different things, but we've explored three main things today. We've explored the promise of his presence. How many of you are grateful for that here today? Amen. We have explored the promise of his salvation. Amen. And we've explored the promise of his holiness. Now here's the thing. These are just three promises. There's thousands of promises in the written word of God. And as we journey through life, sometimes we do, we find ourselves questioning what is it really, God, that you want me to do within my life? Remember when I asked you, have you ever questioned the promises of God? And some of you said, yeah. I, I, I've had a hard time believing that, it, that, that, that this word can be written for me. I have a hard time believing that, that God, you love me. I have a hard time believing that, that your provision is actually for me. I, I have a hard time believing that your peace and your grace truly surpasses all understanding. Sometimes, God, I have a hard time believing that when it comes to this holiness talk, that you, that you, that you really have that in mind for me. You know how, how, how bad my life can be sometimes and, and how I react to things. And today, he wants you to know that his promises are for you. His promises are for you. As we're gathered here today, let us hold firm to what we know about God. Here's what we know. If you're struggling with his promises, I want you to know this. His promises aren't dependent on how you feel in life. His promises are not dependent upon your circumstances. He is the same yesterday as he is today, as he is forever. 
word always stands true. And when our experiences in life don't align with his promises, I want us to remember our feelings can't always be a reliable gauge of the truth of the word. But what is reliable is God and what he says. His promises are anchored in his character. He's faithful and loving and good. And we see that in the scriptures today. So when we face these questions, church, I believe it's so important to dig into the word. It's so important to be able to see what he has at work for you and for. His plans are good. His peace does surpass all understanding. His grace is always more than enough. His holiness just makes us look more like Him every day. God is good, amen? Amen. So when doubts arise, we see His presence through prayer and His Word. And I want you to say this one last time. God promises His presence. Trust in his salvation, knowing that in Christ we're forgiven and we're set free. Church, say this with me. God promises his salvation. And we can surrender to his work of holiness working in us, allowing him to transform us from the inside out. Church, say this with me. God promises his holiness. Amen. So in times of confusion, fully all understand the why behind the things we're going through. But here's the thing, church. We can be certain of who is with us in our situation. Give them praise today. Amen. Now here's what I would like to do today, church.
place where the word of the Holy Spirit, Father, and Father, what we can imagine. Father, thank you for stirring our hearts today, Lord, to be leaning and being closer, Lord, and to understand the word of who you are. And Father, I pray for these letters here today, Father, Lord, that they be used in an impactful way. Lord, whether it's a word that's spoken to us, maybe it's a, 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 a promise we don't really understand, or maybe we're like, I don't, I don't know if this is really for me, but God, I really just believe that you want to speak the word and use these in a way to bring us closer to your presence. So God, I'm just simply asking that you help us to become faithful to you. Help us to be faithful to the process, Father, becoming more like you, Father. Help us to be faithful in helping other people understand the same experience that we have with you. It's the same thing our neighbors can have. It's the same thing our, our, our broken family members can have, Father. This experience of salvation and of holiness, Father. It's the same thing that they can experience. Help us to take it to them and put it in a way where they can understand. Lord, may your Holy Spirit be so before us, Lord, as we leave this place here today. And we say we pray this in the mighty name, in the name of all of us, Lord Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Hey, thank you so much for listening to our podcast today. If you would like to connect with me or Greencastle Church of the Nazarene, you can find us on Facebook at Greencastle Nazarene and also on our website, www.greencastlenazarene.com. May you have a blessed and wonderful day in the Lord.